Hello friends, welcome to the TechGrants. Today we will talk about load balancing and in this video we will learn about what is a load balancer, what are the different type of load balancer that are present, what is the difference between a hardware and a software load balancer and what are the various load balancing techniques or the algorithm that we use for balancing the load and in the end we will talk about sticky session which I will cover as part of one of the load balancing algorithm. So the first and foremost question is what is a load balancer? So a load balancer is like a traffic router and uh, what it does is it will distribute all the incoming requests into the multiple server that is running your application on the back end. So you can think of it like a block here and this is the entry point for all the application or all the requests that is coming for your application. Now behind the scene there are multiple server. These are your server which is running your application. So the responsibility of load balancer here will be to distribute the load among all these servers. So it will distribute the load to each of these server evenly. So it will be the responsibility of this guy. This guy will be the load balancer to make sure that no, none of these servers are overloaded or none of these server gets the bulk of the request. So it should be able, it should be smart enough to distribute the load so that each of these server can take that load so it can happen that I have one server which is more powerful than the other server so this guy should be smart enough to identify that and uh, balance the load or distribute the load accordingly so this is one of the responsibility of the load balancer and why load balancer is used distribution of the request so that uh, it makes sure that none of the servers are loaded helps in making sure that the request does not go to a dead server that is another important thing so in our previous diagram suppose if we had a server this was dead and we had a load balancer here and we have one more server one more server suppose this one of the server has gone down so load balancer should be smart enough to route the request to only these two server and it should not redirect the request to this dead server so that is one of the responsibility of this load balancer and it also decides which server in the cluster is most suitable for handling any incoming request and this point become really important when we will talk about sticky sessions and there can be a hardware load balancer as well which will uh, or a software load balancer but these um, days most of the guys are using or most of the company or organization or even if you are building your own small software you will uh, prefer a software load balancer because uh, it is more flexible and less costly. We will talk about the differences also in the next slide that what is the difference between a software and a hardware load balancer. But yes, you can have that uh, differentiation or this ability of load balancing the incoming request both at the hardware level or at the software level. Now we will talk about the type of the load balancer that are available. So broadly when we classify, I can say that uh, it is divided into two broad categories and those are like the way it is developed and where it is placed so if you are developing a load balancer at the hardware level you have a hardware load balancer you have a software load balancer and you have a virtual load balancer so virtual load balancer is nothing but like a virtualization on top of the hardware so it's like how you create your virtual machines Similar to the second way of categorization is based on where you are placing your load balancer. So what this means is that uh, on which layer of your overall infrastructure you are placing, placing your load balancer. So based on this we have two types of load balancer. One which you place at L4 layer, other which you place at L7 layer. These layers are the OSI standard layer which starts from the physical layer where we have the actual wirings. Uh, then you have a data link layer, then you have uh, a network layer, L4 is your transport layer, then you have session layer that you do management at the session level, you have presentation layer and then finally L7 is your application layer where you can do your load balancing as part of the application layer but oh, in the whole infrastructure only two places you can place your load balancer those are at L4 layer and L7 layer. L7 is the application layer where you can create your uh, software load balancer and uh, you can and this is the most popular one also and the most common one the reason being at this layer you can basically throw few of the non-functional requirement that is related to like security authorization to the load balancer itself 
at L4 layer only uh, way of doing the load balancing is, will be based on the protocols that you have or the transport port protocols that are present and maybe based on the IP address and all so that makes it a little restricted uh, the use cases so that is why l7 is the most common one which we use for load balancing in most of the application so this is the broad broad categorization of uh, what are the types of load balancer that are present now let us talk about the differences between the software and the hardware load balancer so first and foremost thing that a software load balancer provide is the ability to scale it can scale very easily whereas uh, in case of a hardware load balancer if you want to scale up the only way you can do it is by purchasing new hardware you have to uh, add the extra cost for that and uh, it is uh, uh, it will be means you have to buy that piece of hardware and maintain it uh, in your uh, uh, data center the second thing is the cost since when you have to scale it's the software which scales you will not require that much hardware for this particular purpose so that reduces the cost and also the maintenance wise the cost will be low for software load balancer whereas for hardware one it will be high and uh, other thing is that it requires some expertise around that so you need to hire people who will be dedicated for this particular work the lower throughput as compared to high hardware load balancer definitely because hardware will be at the hardware level so that way it will be able to produce more throughput as compared to a software one and uh, when you use a software load balancer you need to add an additional layer of security for your authentication and authorization and uh, also at the transport layer you have to add some security because of the thing is uh, because it's at the software level and uh, it is prone to hacking and all whereas in case of hardware load balancer since the whole device is present physically in your data center it is more secure as compared to the software one which is open to the whole world or to the internet now we'll talk about the load balancing algorithms so the most common one and the easiest one is the round robin which means that if you have uh, uh, suppose if you have four servers here so these are your four servers and we have a load balancer here in front of it and if a request comes so what this guy will do is it will not apply much brain it will uh, it will uh, send the request to each of the server in the round robin fashion what it means is that the first request that it that this load balancer receives it will send it to the first server the second server second request that this guy will receive it will send it to the second server the third request will go to the third one and the fourth request will go to the fourth server so this is the round robin one and after that when the fifth request come it will again go back to the first server so this is how the round round robin mechanism uh, of load balancing will work now this is the benefit here is that it's very easy to implement you have to just circle around uh, the number of server that is present with uh, with us and uh, at the end of the server you just circle back to the first server but the drawback here is that you may have multiple server which will be running at uh, uh, different speed or maybe of different configuration so it can happen that some of the server are big machines with more cpu more processing capacity as compared to some server which are like old ones and have less serving capacity so in that particular case what will happen similar number of requests will go to both the server which does not seem very fair so that is why we have the second algorithm which is weighted round robin now in case of weighted round robin uh, what we can do is that uh, suppose we have four server here we can assign some weight to each of these server so what it means is that we'll assign a weight like uh, 10 or 15 for the, this server which means that this guy can take 15 requests at a time this is a new powerful server so it will take more requests as compared to that we can assign a lower weight to the old server which is not able to get more requests or more, not able to process more requests so for this one we can assign a load of like one or two and that is how we will assign weight to each of the server that is present in our cluster 
and the same thing will be configured on the load balancer side as well which will say that okay this guy has more load uh, taking capacity so based on the load the probability will be calculated and uh, the request will be routed based on the probability that we calculated based on the weight that was assigned to each of the server so that way this guy will have more probability of getting more number of requests as compared to this guy so that is how the weighted round robin mechanism works the next is least connection method so in this particular scenario what will happen is that load balancer will have a knowledge that how many connection has been made to each of the server that is present here so in this scenario what would have happened is like each of the server would have got initially one one request but these two guys were able to finish complete the request and uh, they are free now whereas the request that went to the first two server they are still processing so the next request that will come it will go to this server because this guy is free now and it has the least number of connection which is present currently now the next request that will come it will see that all these three have one one request with them and this guy is free so this the new request will go to the fourth server so that is how the least connection method works which will uh, know the exact number of connection that has been made to each of the server so it will not think about what is getting processed it may happen that uh, the drawback here is the biggest drawback here is that it may happen that this guy has just one connection but it is processing a bunch of record or bulk record which is slowing down the system whereas these guys may have like two or three connections still they are processing uh, the task that is assigned to these servers are like uh, very small tasks so it might get finished fast so that is one drawback but uh, if those things are uh, okay for you so you can still go with the least connection method the next one is the least response time so this is based on this algorithm is based on how quickly your server is responding back for each of the request so if my ser this server which is the old one is responding slowly so this will get least number of connection in the overall run duration for which this particular server is running or for that matter the the duration for which the whole cluster is running so whichever server is responding quickly to me i will be assigning more load to that particular server so that the request that is coming gets processed very fast and if it is like a user facing application so the response time for the user will be very good so this kind this response time based algorithm will be used when you have an application which is client facing and the processing power of all the machines are like almost similar and uh, not the processing power but the task that is being assigned to all the server are almost of similar size or similar which requires similar capability for processing so that is where this algorithm will be handy now the next one which is again a very common mechanism after round robin is the hashing this is also called ip hashing so what we do here is that we create a hash table on our side and uh, we hash the ip address and uh, based on uh, based on the hash that we got as part of uh, the hashing algorithm whatever hashing algorithm that we used so based on that hash value of the ip a server will be allocated so if we have like four server here we have one two three and four server here and we have a hash function which will hash the ip address so suppose the first ip address was something like 10.1.1.1.1 so if this is one of our ip address so i will put this ip address in my hash table and i will hash this uh, hash this particular ip address using a hash function so suppose the output of this function was one so what i will do is i will assign the request coming from this ip address to this particular server my first server if i had some other ip address like 192.1.1.10 or something like that so i will store this ip address and i will hash this ip address and maybe i will get the value of this hash as 4 so all the request from this ip address will be routed to the fourth server that is present so this is how the ip hashing or in general hashing works so you can perform this hashing on your ip address maybe on uh, some other criteria you can choose which seems unique to you and uh, 
here one thing you have to keep in mind is that the hashing function whatever you are using is really strong so that your load is distributed across the server it should not happen that um, the most of the uh, ip address are getting similar or same uh, hash value that way there will be a hash collision and then one of the server will get loaded so that has to be kept in mind the next one is consistent hashing so i will not go into deep or de detail of consistent hashing because i have already explained this as part of my system design video for distributed cache so you can go back to that particular video and you can check out uh, the how consistent hashing works and the same algorithm can be applied here also for load balancing i have explained it in detail that uh, how it works it is basically like a circle around of this hash so if one of the server goes down you just route it back to the first server it works like that so you can check out that detail in the other video and finally we have a uh, session persistence or also called sticky session so what happens as part of sticky session is if you have a load balancer and uh, again you have bunch of servers behind the load balancer so what load balancer will do is that it will identify the user so if there is a user u1 if it this guy makes a request to the load balancer for any application so this load balancer will know that this is the user and this guy has already interacted with me and uh, for all the request that this guy makes this request will be routed to one of the server so that way load balancer is making sure that whenever request comes from user 1 it will always be routed to server 1 if this is my server 1 if the request comes from user 2 and uh, first time when user 2 accessed the load balancer or the service the request was routed to service 3 suppose so from next time whenever user 2 will make a request it will always go to user uh, it will always go to server 3 the benefit here is that that uh, at the server level there will be local cache and that will have the data related to this user so that way if any operation has to be done it will be super fast and uh, it does not has to go to a database or to a, another cache or maybe to some other server to fetch the record for, from there so it can be immediately returned from that uh, that server itself and uh, that is where the sticky session thing comes into play and it will make your request response fast uh, one example is uh, when you have an application where you create a cart kind of thing so you can use it there but uh, i don't think nowadays it is used for that particular purpose given that your application can be hosted on mobile uh, laptop or computer or anywhere you can access that uh, your client facing ui can be on any of these device so uh, in that particular case sticky session becomes little tricky but uh, uh, in previous day uh, in older days it can it was used for this kind of uh, use case as well so these are the algorithms that we use for uh, our load balancing purpose but there are few benefit of the load balancer that we get from uh, using all these algorithm or using the load balancer in general and the first and the most common that you can basically take it from the name itself is that it is it makes our system really scalable so you can have multiple server running behind the scene and the incoming request will be routed evenly or it should be routed evenly to each of the server that is running behind the scene so tomorrow if you add one more server so it will be configured in load balancer and uh, then it's the responsibility of the load balancer to distribute the load among the all the server that is present as part of our cluster so that is what it distributes the load across the multiple server makes the system highly available why it makes the system highly available because if one of the system go one of the server goes down then load balancer will not make will not contact that particular server it will not redirect the request to the dead server that way all the request that uh, was initiated by a user it will get one response from the server so it will not just die or it will not get an it will not get interrupted and it also acts as like a health check for each of the server because uh, it can you can configure like a heartbeat kind of thing that load balancer sends it to the each of the server to understand which server is dead which is performing 
बेटर और व्हेन यू आर डीलिंग विद थिंग्स लाइक द लीस्ट नंबर ऑफ कनेक्शन और लीस्ट रिस्पॉन्स टाइम सो दैट वे लोड बैलेंसर हैज द आइडिया दैट which server of this particular cluster is behaving in which way or which is the fastest server so that way you can uh, basically record all those data and you can use it for uh, uh, making your system more fault tolerant and uh, ha- uh, if the need they need is there then you can maybe scale it further and uh, what i told in the very beginning so you can basically it can act as an abstraction for the non functional requirement that your service has so you can put all the non not all but mo- few of the uh, non functional requirement related to security and all at the load balancer level itself so these are the benefit that we get out of a load balancer and uh, that is it that is the scope of this particular video that's it for this video see you in the next one do like the video put in the comment section if you have any doubt or any question that you have put in the, in the comment section if you want me to add video on any other topic that's it for this video thank you for watching take care bye